the Roaring Twenties, a time of Chaplin, Prohibition and women rights movements. Speakeasies filled to the brim and... Wait, why are women glowing? Is that a radioactive chocolate? A radioactive cigarette? And a radioactive... Oh god, no! On November 8, 1895, German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen was experimenting on electron beams when he noticed a glow coming from a nearby chemically coated screen. Intrigued, he named whatever caused the glow X-rays. He began studying these new X-rays and quickly discovered that they were partially absorbed by the human body. He realized that if he placed a tissue between an X-ray source and a detector, he could figure out how dense each section of the tissue is. In other words, he could tell apart bone from soft tissue. This was a game changer. For the first time ever, humans could see the inside of the human body without having to cut it open. Shortly after, the curious figured out that radiation could destroy tissue. How did they figure this out, you might be wondering? Well, it went a little something like this. Honey, hold this radium. How do you feel? Normal, but it's getting red. Noted. Have some more. I still feel nothing, but the red spot is getting bigger. Noted. Have some more. How about now? How do you feel? Interesting. Noted. And Madame Curie soon had a great idea. If radiation can penetrate human tissue and also destroy it, perhaps it can be used to destroy tumors. If used carefully, radiation could be used to treat lupus and cancer. These advances were so impressive that it almost seemed like magic. Magic? Are you saying radiation is magical? No, I mean that it resembles magic. Magic, you say? Can we sell it? I love magic. I love magic money. makes you money. Can no we sell this? I love, love it. I love magic. I love magic. Say no more. I know exactly what to do. Are you insecure about your smile? Is it not shining like it used to? Well, fear not, because our new Doramat radioactive toothpaste is here to solve all your problems. It will whiten your teeth and freshen your disgusting, putrid breath. Wait, are you saying that this toothpaste is radioactive? Yes. There is radioactive material in this toothpaste. Yes. If I use this toothpaste, there will be radiation inside my mouth. Yes. Take all my money. Take it. I see nothing wrong with this. To be fair, although their advertisement stated your teeth will shine with radioactive brilliance, later testing showed no detectable amount of radiation. So congratulations, Jimmy. You just got scammed. Are you done? Yes, sorry. If cleaning your teeth with radiation is not for you, don't worry, because you can also eat Burke and Brown's radium-infused chocolate. It will revert the effects of aging and rejuvenate you. Do you have any disease, infection or ailment? Worry not. Water infused with radioactive particles will cure literally anything from stomach aches to mental problems or even erectile dysfunction. You might want to write that down, James. Tired that smoking is not giving you cancer fast enough? Buy Abba Chari's radium cigarettes. Just like rigorous cigarettes, but with radium. Call now and find out what other radioactive products we have in store for you. No way. Hi, I want to order everything. What the? My love, look what I just bought. A radioactive water dispenser to prevent and cure all ailments. Radioactive clothing that makes me better at sports. Some radioactive makeup for you. Radium suppositories to help me with my manhood problems. Radium condoms for when the suppositories kick in. <sighs> Did you really spend all our money on obvious scams again? Oh honey, it cannot be a scam, it was all over the news, look! How many times have I told you, you can't consume all your news from the same place? Sometimes, news outlets have their own interests, financial or political, so you have to get your information from multiple sources. But that sounds like a lot of work. It doesn't have to be. If you use today's sponsor! Ground News is an app and website designed to overcome bias in our news consumption. It allows you to compare how different news outlets cover a certain topic. For example, in this story about Germany's far-right AFD party, you can see the political inclination of the outlets that have written about it. You can easily compare the way in which left, center or right-wing sources have covered the issue. You can see that left-wing articles 
speak of the rise of Germany's far-right AFD party, while the right-wing Frankfurter Allgemeine speaks of the failure of an AFD candidate. Ground News allows you to select specific people, places and topics to build your own custom feed. But what I like the most about Ground News is the blind spot feature. It features news that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. It is a great way to discover stories that you might be missing and to challenge your worldview. Ground News also shows you your own data so you can see your bias and what you are actually interested in. Ground News is a great way to stay informed and unbiased. You can sign up now using the link in the description, ground.news slash things I care about. Not only will you get 30% off, but you will also be supporting my channel. Okay, now back to the video. To be fair, most of these products probably did not contain any actual radioactive material, but the fact that they were marketed as such tells you all you need to know about public's perception of radium at the time. For a few decades, corporations and even some scientists got away with this reckless use of radiation. But they were playing with fire, and the time would soon come for people to get burned. In the US, the Radium Corporation and the Radium Dial Company began selling glow-in-the-dark watches. To make them glow-in-the-dark, they used paint infused with radioactive particles. These small dials required very fine painting skills, and the companies decided that young women and their small hands were perfect for the task. Surprisingly, this job was actually considered an elite job, as it paid more than three times the average factory job, which gave the girls a degree of financial freedom that was craved in a time of activism and female empowerment. Many of these women would then spread the message of the job's appeal to their friends and families, and often whole sets of siblings would work together in the studio. By the time their shift was over, the workers would be covered in paint and glow in the dark, which gained them the nickname The Ghost Girls. This was actually part of the allure of the job, and some of the women came to work in their best dresses so that they would then shine in the down holes at night. Okay, so how exactly am I supposed to paint this thing? Oh, don't worry, it's super easy. Just dip the brush into the radioactive paint, give it a little lick, and you're good to go. You want me to lick the radioactive material? Yes, with my tongue. Yes, which leads to the inside of my body where all my vital organs are. Yes. Are you sure this is safe? Of course, it says so in this science paper I paid this scientist to write. I would never expose my workers to dangerous substances for profit. Okay, I trust you. She should not have in fact trusted him. The women were instructed to put the brushes on their lips in order to give them a fine tip. And each time they did so, they swallowed a little bit of the glowing green paint. Although the owners of their companies told their workers that the paint was completely safe, they themselves carefully avoided any exposure to the radioactive substances. And of course, the claim that the paint was safe was a complete lie. Radium has very similar chemical properties to calcium. So once inside the human body, radium tends to naturally deposit itself in all kinds of bone tissue. In 1922, a worker called Molly Magia fell ill and had to quit the studio. Initially, she reported an aching tooth, which her dentist pulled out. Shortly after, the tooth next to that one began to hurt as well and also had to be extracted. Okay, so you have been losing teeth like crazy, your mouth has been filled with painful ulcers that make you drool, blood and pus, and you feel agonizing pain in your limbs that have made it impossible for you to walk, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, I have no idea what this is, but here's an aspirin, good luck. Okay, Molly, let's see how you're doing today. Open your mouth, please. When her dentist prodded delicately at her jawbone, it broke against his fingers. He removed it, not by an operation, but merely by putting his fingers in her mouth and lifting it out. On September 12, 1922, the infection ate through Molly's jugular vein and she passed away at 5 p.m. The nurse that tried to help her claimed she suffered a slow and painful death. And at this point, she wasn't the only one affected. More of her colleagues were also experiencing the effects of the mysterious ailment. By 1924, 50 women who would work at these factories had fallen ill, and a dozen had died. Do you have anything to say about the claims that your paint is killing your workers? That is absolutely false. American Radium categorically denies that our magical paint is anything but magical and wonderful. Let our official company doctor explain what happened. There is a clear and logical explanation for all of this. The workers all died 
of syphilis. All of them? Yes. Even the 14-year-old virgin girl? Yes. They are attention-seeking hoes. All of them. The companies were clearly not going to go down without a fight. A tile painter by the name of Grace Fryer asked the company to pay her compensation money to cover the cost of her medical bills. Her request was refused and she decided to take the matter to court. She visited lawyer after lawyer after lawyer. No one wanted to take her case. Not only did they believe it impossible to defeat such a powerful corporation and their army of lawyers, but the regulations at the time were incredibly unfavorable. There was a statute of limitations of five months at the state level and two years at the federal level for workplace exposure to dangerous chemicals. But exposure to radiation took longer than that to manifest. So by the time any workers came forward, the statute of limitations was already up. After two years of relentless search, Grace Fryer made her way to the office of a young lawyer named Raymond Berry. Despite her broken back, broken foot and a disintegrating jaw, Grace valiantly pleaded her case, and he decided to take it. He believed that the statute of limitations timer should only begin counting down once the worker is made aware of their ailment. According to this interpretation, Grace still had two months to sue the company. Word spread and more girls joined the suit, Catherine Schaub, Quinta and Albina Maggia, Molly's sisters, and Edna Hussman. They knew that the days were numbered. Some had merely months to live. Still, they wanted to make justice not only for themselves, but for all others. The press called them the Radium Girls. The company executives denied it all. They denied they ever instructed the girls to lip point. They denied that practice was done at all in their studios. They denied that radium powder clung to them. And of course, they denied that radium itself was dangerous. The USRC reached out to Grace Fryer. Hey Gracie Grace, my friend, remember when you asked us for compensation money? How about we do that now? Not because my client did anything wrong, but because they are such a good company and care so much about you that they want to make sure you're taken care of. Good try. I'll see you in court. The Radium Girls now needed to prove that Radium was responsible for their condition. But the only way at the time to check if the bones did indeed have Radium was to extract the bones, cremate them, and dissolve the ashes into hydrochloric acid. This, of course, was not something they could do, except for one, their little sister, Molly Magia. The examining doctors took her apart and examined her bones. There was no sign of syphilis. There was only radium. The results gained media attention and the case became even more famous. On January 12, 1928, the trial finally began. I will make it clear, OBJECTION! That it was the USRC's radioactive paint, OBJECTION! That poisoned the girls, OBJECTION! I call the accuser, Grace Fryer, to the stand. What is your name? Grace Fryer, OBJECTION! You can't object to yourself. Oh, <laughs> sorry, old habits. So, what is your name? Grace Fryer. Would you then agree that Grace is your first name? Uh, yes. And Fryer, your last name? Uh, yes. So Grace Fryer would be your full name? Yes. Do you agree that your name spelled backwards is Reif Ekarg? The defense knew that the girls were tired and ill, and they prolonged the case as much as they could. Still, slowly but surely, the radium girls were able to prove that their ailments were caused by radium. But their time was running out, and the radium company lawyers knew this. Once upon a time, there was a simple and beautiful girl named Cinderella. She lived with her evil stepmother and two stepsisters. Objection! How is this relevant? I'll get to it. When? This is taking too long. My clients have no longer than 18 months to live. Really? Is that so? Ring ring. Oh, uh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's so crazy. One of our key witnesses just called. He has to leave the country for 19 months, so we are forced to ask for a recess until then. What? You can't do that! Recess granted. We reconvene in 19 months. The woman had no other choice but to negotiate a settlement out of court. Although their suit was unsuccessful, the case gained incredible media attention, and their experiences made the issue of radio safety a front-page story around the world. But even at this point, the United States Radium Corporation denied its role 
even as their workers continue to get sick and die. For years, more workers unsuccessfully tried to sue the radium company. Despite massive media attention and support, no suit was successful. Until in 1938, a dying radium worker named Catherine Wolf Donahue decided to sue Radium Dial over her illness. She testified from her literal deathbed. She was so ill that her lawyers didn't even know if she would be alive for the next hearing. Her case was aided by the death by radiation poisoning of Dr. Sabin, the inventor of radium dial paint, as well as by scientist Harrison Stanford Martland, who conclusively proved that radium paint had poisoned the watch painters. Finally, the judge found the company to be guilty. But the ruling was appealed. Again and again and again. It was fought all the way to the Supreme Court. In the end, the case had been won eight times before the company was finally forced to pay. Catherine died shortly after, and the next year, Germany invaded Poland, starting World War II. Demand for glow-in-the-dark dials skyrocketed, but thanks to the massive media attention, not enough girls were willing to take the jobs. The US government was forced to take action and passed life-saving regulations to protect workers. It ultimately led to the establishment of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The Center for Human Radiobiology studied the girls extensively, allowing for better and safer radiotherapies. But you won't often read their names in history books. For today, the individual radium girls have largely been forgotten. It was because of their strength and perseverance in the face of agonizing pain and unavoidable death that workers' rights improved for hundreds of millions of people. Catherine Donahue, Grace Fryer, Catherine Schaub, Edna Hussman, Molly Maggia, Quinta Maggia MacDonald, Albina Maggia Laris. These are just some of the names of the women we need to honor and salute as fearless champions, who stood up against injustice not just for themselves, but for all who would follow. Let them shine through history with all that they achieved in their tragically short lives. Let us forever remember the tragic story of the Radium Girls.